All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy. He is uh, 32 years old right now. And he's going to share his story of how he uh, got married when he was 26 years old to a girl that, just like so many other stories before his, thought was amazing and all that. Unfortunately, it didn't exactly end that way. And you're going to see here, like I said, that in the beginning, I thought everything was great with her. But there were red flags. In particular, not from her, but from her family. Her family had a major issue with her being with him, especially marrying him, because she comes from what it sounds like a very upper middle class or even upper class family, while his family is a from a he's from a blue collar family, and her dad was always giving him shit and talking down to him all the time. He still got together with her, but you're going to see in this story, guys, when he the father saw that she was going to marry him no matter what. The father insisted that they uh, signed a prenup so that way that if they split up that he wouldn't get any of their money. That was his big concern. And the guy was just like, whatever. So the guy, you're going to see here how he handles the situation. And ultimately, the father-in-law insisting that he would do the prenup is going to come back to bite the father-in-law in the ass down the road and, and the girl. And uh, I'm doing this one, guys, for lots and lots of reasons. There's a lot of lessons here, but particularly about red flags, paying attention to the girl's family, having a good prenup, making sure everything's done right, handled that way, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, obviously paying attention like I said, the red flags and understanding they do happen and being willing to walk away when it gets too bad and always watching your girl no matter what. But this is a really good one. This is a longer video, guys, but this story you will definitely enjoy. So most certainly watch it to the end for the happy ending for the guy. So it starts off. He says, uh, hello, SSM. I've been watching your channel for the last year and I'm amazed at some of the crazy stories that you shared. I love the information you share with guys in general to help out identifying and looking for red flags. For that, I'll always be grateful to you and your channel. The information you share helped me discover that my own wife was not only exhibiting many of the red flags you talk about, but that led me to discovering that she was cheating on me. I wanted to share my experiences, and hopefully it will help some other guys out there. Bro, it definitely will. If the other stories I've done helped you, your story will help other guys. So we're all doing each other a favor here by sharing the stories. Uh, for a little background... My wife and I have been married for a little more than six years when it all came crashing down. This happened about 10 months ago, so it's all still pretty fresh. We were both 32 years old, and we were just at the point in our relationship when the discussion of having a child was coming up. I can't thank you and your viewers enough for saving me from making the mistake with that woman. I came from a blue-collar family and never went to college. I did spend four years in the Navy and got out with an honorable discharge when I was 22. I was an aviation electrician, an aviation electrician's mate, in English, an aircraft electrician. The training I received was excellent and helped me land a good job at a company that builds military jets. I'm not sure what the rules are for naming companies, but if it helps, one of the aircraft that we build is the uh, FA-18 Hornet. So probably maybe Boeing, Northrop, uh, McDonnell Douglas, one of those guys. Uh, it was also the primary aircraft I worked on while serving, serving, so it was a good match for my training and experience. So basically my job stayed the same with a much better paycheck and no more deployments. I love my time in the military and will always appreciate the good things and places I had a chance to see, but civilian life is good. I spent the first couple of years working, hanging out with friends, and just having a good time. I wasn't taking dating very seriously and I was taking life as it came to me. I had a lot of fun. In that time, I met my future wife. We'll call her Cindy. We dated for a few years. We got engaged when I was 25 and married by the time I was 26. Smack. 26. Bro. You're just getting started in life. I was going to say, if you're going to get married, if you're going to do it, wait till you're close to 30 years old, more experience, more money saved up, more time with her to really get to know her character. And as you guys are going to see, her family. But he was young. Didn't know about my work or work like mine out there. So, you know, he learned now. But hopefully his story can help younger guys before they make some of the makes mistakes that he did. But let me make this clear. You know, this guy's a good guy. He's a cool dude. And what you're eventually going to see that she does, that's on her. Absolutely. But there are things that with her family, which you're going to see, definitely he should not have let slide. Uh... Anyhow, I thought she was perfect. She was beautiful and loved to have fun. Well, to find fun. 
Uh, most of, our, of the hobbies we had were closely aligned. In short, I thought we made a good match. And for the first four years of our marriage, all was wonderful. Well, so you thought, bro. I hope the first four years nothing was going down. I really do. But given what I know about your story, there could have been other things going down. Uh, she was attentive to my needs and I hers. It wasn't all peaches and cream, though. When we were dating, I found out early on that her family didn't like me. It wasn't because of anything that I had done. It was because of who I was. She came from a family that had some money, and they never missed an opportunity to remind me that my family wasn't good enough for their daughter. What a bunch of assholes. So the nicest people I've met in my life, guys, are people that literally don't have two nickels to rub together. Barely making it. And some of the uh, biggest a-holes I've ever met in my life are people that have all the money in the world. I'm sure you guys have probably experienced something like that. <clears throat> says here, Her dad in particular was relentless. He would openly insult me, but always in a way that was condescending or that couldn't be, couldn't be mistaken for a joke. Cindy, for the most part, would defend me and chastise her dad when he said anything derogatory to or about me. It didn't matter that I made a really good wage for a guy in my mid-twenties. No, because they're obviously white collar. He, her family, they're white collar and college educated. And you didn't go to college. That was your own damn business. And now you're doing darn well. But So he sees you as beneath him and beneath the daughter. Okay, And I got to tell you guys, there are a lot of you out there that uh, decide not to go to college. And you guys pursued a good trade. Or maybe you did some college and started your own businesses. And it isn't always funny. When you end up making way more money than the guys that did go to college and did take on all those debts, and those same guys have a real snooty attitude, you're making more than them. You got more than them. I've I've experienced this obviously because I never graduated college, and I do fantastic. It's always fun for me. And and don't get me wrong, if you go to college and that's good, if you go and pursue something that's good, you know I I, I obviously have no problem white collar careers, not at all. But if someone's an asshole about it, then I do. But this is a lesson, guys, about paying attention to the girl's family I talk about all the time. How Not just how they are with her, but also how they treat you. Because if this guy's talking down to him, and I get that it's awkward because he's with her, he doesn't want to fight with her dad, but you can't get into a, marry into a family like that because they're always going to look down at you and your family, and they're going to have issues with your kids. It's not worth it. And I'm all for standing up for yourself, but even if you do, that's always going to be there. So it's best in a situation like that, even if she's cool, unless she's willing to completely walk away from her family completely, which good luck there having that happen. It's best to move on and have someone that's a lot like you. But no matter what, you stand your freaking ground. Don't take any shit because that guy's a bully and you're going to see more of this and bullies only respond to strength. He says, anyway, when I got to the nerve to ask her dad's permission to marry me, at first he flat out rejected the idea. He actually laughed at me. I can still remember how embarrassed I was. When I told Cindy what he had done, she was furious. I'm not sure what she and her family talked about after that, but he called me and asked me to see me a week later. I'd say, motherfucker, you can come see me. I'm not going to you after how you treated me. He wanted me to meet him in his office. He was a money manager for a nice company. I met him in his office, and when he asked me, he asked me and explained that he was against his daughter getting married to me, but said that it was her choice. What an asshole. Doesn't make a difference how well you treat her. Doesn't make a difference if you make a good living. He still sees you as beneath him. The only way that he would agree to it is if I would sign a prenuptial agreement to protect his daughter from me. I was a little confused at first because I made a lot of money, a lot more money than Cindy. But he told me that I was not going to put myself in a position to get his family's money. Oh my God. This is how these people think. That, oh, well, my daughter's with a guy who comes from a, uh, in his view a less than worthy family or, or life, therefore he must be after her money. That, that's the only reason why. When the irony is, the type of guy he should be watching out for is the type of guy that more like him. Those are the type of guys that'll slither in like a snake and then try to take take her and the family's money for all it's worth. He's, he's picking the wrong guy here. But this will come back to bite him in the ass. Uh, he goes on, I can still remember having him being a little shocked when I started laughing and agreed. He had an agreement with him and thought I was going to sign it right there in his office, but I made him give me a copy so I could have it reviewed by a lawyer. Very smart, bro. I didn't want anything to do with his money, but I learned in the military to never sign a legal document without getting it reviewed by a professional. 
Over the following week, I called around some offices until I found a lawyer that had time to review it for me. The best $300 I ever spent. After reviewing the agreement, my lawyer made some suggestions for additional things to add, so we did. One thing he suggested was an infidelity clause. It was stipulated that if the clause was breached, we would forego any type of marital compensation to include alimony. Remember this part, guys, because this part's going to come back later on. And again, remember, he makes more than her. So if they got a divorce, according to this prenup, if, if they got divorced, he would owe her alimony. Make that clear. However, there's a, there's a clause in here, a, a, a stipulation that if there's any infidelity, no alimony. Let's, let's just remember that. And this was Daddy's idea. It was almost two weeks before I could get back in front of her father and return the updated agreement, and a week later, Cindy and I were both in his office, signing the agreement and having it notarized. I never would have married this broad with the family acting like this. I don't care how cool she was or how cool she seemed or how good-looking she was. Not worth it. Okay, cops, enough of the fucking sirens. Anyhow, uh, long story short... We got married a few months later, and other than her family talking down to my family at the reception, we had a good time. Of course they were. Of course they were talking shit to your family. It's a disgrace. Uh, At one point during the reception, her dad and my dad had a little confrontation. It started with her dad saying something to mine, trying to belittle him, and my dad asking her if he's ever had a good ass whooping. I'm pretty sure that was the first and only time our fathers ever talked to each other. If I don't mention it again, I love my dad. Yeah, good luck with the white-collar guy trying to uh, fight the blue-collar guy. How do you think that's going to go? I'll put all my money every time on the blue-collar guy kicking the ass of the cocky white-collar guy. See, this guy's a total dick. Never should have married her for lots of reasons. Uh, He goes on. So that's the background of when we started. Now, it was about a year and a half ago that I noticed some of the red flags that were talked about in many of your videos. A friend of mine had turned me onto your channel after spending some time listening, and it was like I was going down a checklist. Yes, she does this. Yes, that too. And on and on. Until watching some of your videos, I had never noticed any of these red flags, but afterwards, I couldn't ignore them. Well, thank your friend for showing you my channel, because this obviously saved your ass. When I thought back on it, at first, the changes that I was seeing in Cindy were small. She was in marketing for a medium-sized company in our area. The first thing I noticed was that she was always had her phone with her. Before that, she would just have it lying around the house whenever she put it on. <clears throat> now it was always in her hand or in her pocket. We had an open phone policy in our house. In the more than five years we had been married at that point, I had never felt the need to look at her phone, even though she periodically looked at mine. She's looking at your phone, but you're not. You don't look at hers, probably because she's she's obviously up to some things. So she just assumes you must do it too. It was like a switch flicked on that she started being more guarded with her phone. On top of that, she started spending time after work with her coworkers for drinks, and then started out slowly as well, but end up being two or three times a week. At one point, I asked her why was she spending so much time with doing that, and she'd give me some excuse that was just what her office did and that everyone did it. Yes, all co-workers will get together after work and have drinks occasion, but multiple times a week? Come on. Bullshit. She'd be home with her family. You are her family. If it had been... Uh if it had only been being protective on her phone and the nights with her coworkers, I probably wouldn't have noticed anything. It was a feeling I was starting to have that she was being colder towards me. Less affectionate, uh, that was when I started to wonder what was going on and I brought it up to her. I asked her directly if there was something wrong with our relationship and told her what my concerns were. She seemed a little shocked and assured me that things were good. Well, of course she's going to say that. She even spent a few weeks paying more attention to me after that and I thought things had gone back to normal. She stopped being so guarded with her phone. I thought everything was going back to normal. It was uh, it was something that you had said in one of your videos that got my gut doing flips. Something about protesting their innocence too much. I never accused her or anything. I'd only mentioned the things I saw that were making me uneasy. It was a few days after that when she handed me her phone to look through to put my mind at ease that, that there was nothing going on. So after a few days after the whole phone thing, you, she then just volunteers her phone to say nothing's going wrong. That's because she had days to clear the whole thing out, all the evidence. I thought that was strange, since I never asked to see it. That was the moment that I knew something was going on, because it felt like she was trying to prove she was innocent when I had never accused her of anything. I looked through her phone, and there was nothing to, in it. 
just her regular apps and the only phone contacts were her group of friends and family. That was the day as she started leaving her phone laying around again. I couldn't put into words at the time, but I knew something was wrong. Trust your gut, gentlemen, always. Your gut is that superpower that will tell you when something's wrong. Always listen to it. Even if you don't like what your gut's telling you, you got to listen to it. If you don't do that, you can be very, very unhappy down the road. Over the next three months, she was still doing her late nights with her coworkers, but the issue with the phone never started back up. All the attention she had started to show me again started tapering off, but this time I said I never said anything to her. I didn't know why, but I couldn't help but feel there was something wrong. No, feel isn't the right word. I knew there was something wrong, but I didn't know what it could be. If not for your videos, my mind would never have gone down the path of thinking she might be cheating on me. Look, bro, nobody wants to think that about their girl, let alone their wife and someone who they love. Unfortunately, how many stories have I gone over like this when they thought everything was wonderful and something was happening? Or there were red flags, but they know there were, there were red flags. In the end, it was my neighbor that helped me put the final piece together. Not intentionally. I was downloading some large files on my computer. I've got really good internet, so I shouldn't have taken as long as it was. At first, I thought that resetting my modem and router would solve the problem, and it did for a few minutes. But then the download speeds dropped significantly again. I'm pretty savvy when it comes to computers and electronics, so I started troubleshooting the issue. The first thing I did was check the internet provider to make sure there wasn't an issue with my service. It was good. So one by one, I started checking my equipment. The modem, it was good. The router, it was good. My computer and all the drivers, they were all up to date. I was starting to get frustrated. Uh, with internet, there's only so many things that can go wrong. Everything seemed to be working fine except the bandwidth. The bandwidth was going somewhere, so I opened up my router to see where I could see if I could figure it out. As it turned out, I found out that my neighbor had just had hijacked my Wi-Fi and was going crazy on the bandwidth. It was easy to find since the router login page shows how many devices are connected. I went through my house and checked each device that was connected to the Wi-Fi. When I finished, there were two devices that had been assigned IP addresses that I couldn't account for. One of them was listed as a computer and one was an Android phone. I went to my neighbor's apartment and after t talking to the lady that lived there, we figured out that her son had hijacked my internet doing something with video games. <laughs> that little shit. When I asked about her that the phone, she was confused. She and her son both had iPhones. They didn't have any Android phones. I asked her to double check with her son to make sure I didn't have one and that she didn't know about, and he didn't. So there was there was someone that was close enough on my Wi-Fi hotspot and someone that had a password to get access to my Wi-Fi. Both Cindy and I had iPhones. The only thing I could assume was that Cindy had another phone. Aha, uh -huh. remember the whole her suddenly leaving her phone up all the time for you to see? After a few days, maybe in those few days, she got herself another phone, her affair phone. Something else I learned from your videos, I had never seen her using a phone other than her iPhone, but there was no doubt that there was an Android phone that was regularly using my Wi-Fi. My first thought was that she might have a work phone, but in the four years that she'd been working for her company, I'd never seen her with another phone, and she never mentioned having one. At first, I thought about her asking her if she had another phone when she got home, but after learning about gaslighting, I figured she would only lie about it if I asked. Yeah, she would totally cover her tracks on that. Better to do, better to do the detective work on your own and find out. I spent the next week keeping an eye on her to see if I could get any indication of her doing anything shady. I had already searched the apartment for another phone, but never found one. At this point, I was frustrated, angry, and had no doubt in my mind there was something going on. I didn't have any idea how to prove it, and for a few sleepless nights, I thought I might actually have been going insane. For most of our marriage, Cindy and I had a great SCX life. I mean, six or seven days a week. Over the last six months, I had dropped to about once a month, and that was when, when she knew I was getting frustrated at being rejected. Six to seven nights a week, years after getting married, and then all of a sudden down to once a month? Yeah, you bet your ass something's going on here. I'm amazed you were having a six to seven times a week after you got married. She's a little hornball. Um, <clears throat> I hated that I was thinking that she could be cheating on me, but I couldn't get the thoughts out of my head. It was four days after I checked the router and discovered there was an unknown phone attached to my Wi-Fi that I crossed that last barrier in my, in my trust for my wife. 
Around 3 o'clock in the morning, I sneaked out of the room with her purse that she kept on the floor beside her bed, and I looked in it. I'm not sure how other guys are about looking at a woman's purse, but I was not comfortable doing that. It made me feel dirty than anything else I've ever done. It didn't take long to find a mysterious missing phone. There you go. Sydney had a nice Android phone in her purse. I'm not sure she never thought that I would find it or she just was that confident. But she had the same password on that phone that she uses on all her devices. Oh boy, now we're getting somewhere. So let's see what this guy is going to discover on the, uh, the wife's phone. Long story short, when I looked in her phone, it was all there. She had been seeing another man. From what I could tell, it was the guy that she worked with. Well, there's a freaking stereotype. Remember all those nights out that she's at work, at, uh, out at having drinks with, with co-workers and all that, that they have to do? Who do you think she was with? I had met him a few times at work events. I wish I could say it was a harmless flirting, but no, it was all there. They sent the I love you text along with nudes. They talked about the meetups and where they were going to meet next. There was even a video of my wife giving him a BJ in what looked like to be the front seat of a car I didn't recognize. Oh my God. That's terrible. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry you went through all this and had to see this. Ugh. The messages were all there after the time that I had previously brought my concerns with her. I had three months of her texting this guy. Even after seeing all the disgusting things my wife was doing with this man, the thing that hurt me the most was how they were talking about me and his wife. My first instinct was to go drag the uh, cheating SLUT out of bed and toss her out of the front door. No one would blame me if you did. I'll admit, I almost did it. But, the, but, but other than some instant gratification, it wasn't going to help me. The marriage was over, and it was her fault. There was no sense in getting myself into trouble. After forwarding, forwarding screenshots of all their messages and pictures and videos into my phone, I put her phone back in her purse and returned it. I was crushed and had no idea what to do. I sat in my office for the rest of the morning. I didn't even recognize, realize how long it had been sitting, and they were dazed and confused until Cindy peeked her head and asked me why I was up so early. I'm not sure if it was the look on my face or my general aura, but I could tell that she knew something was wrong. I just told her that I wasn't feeling well and was going to take the day off work. She tried to talk me, <clears throat> talk to me a little more, and I and could see that she seemed to be a little nervous, but she left the office to get ready for work. Yeah, I'm sure you had a lot... She could probably tell something was up. Plus, also, she's always going to be on her guard doing what she's doing. Before leaving, she stopped in and gave me a kiss and hug before telling me how much she loved me leaving for work. That kiss was, without exception, the most disgusting thing anyone has ever done to me. It made me furious and something inside of me broke. All the pain and anger was replaced with nothing. Not anger, pain, or sadness. Just a cold emptiness that I couldn't even put into words. Yeah, man, you went numb. A lot of guys before you and a lot of guys after you are going to have the same kind of reaction. I knew two things. One, my marriage was over. And two, I had to get the hell out of there. I called my boss and let him know that I was going on on and on. I was going on and after a little back and forth, he let me know. He let me take two weeks vacation to try and get myself sorted out. I must have spent an hour sitting in my office just feeling completely numb when I remembered something. The prenuptial agreement. If I didn't learn anything else from the uh, military, it was to keep important documents safe. After a bit of searching through my filing cabinet, I found it and read it a few times. This was my golden ticket. I spent the next two, day, two hours calling around different lawyers looking for a divorce attorney and ended up setting an appointment for one the following day. When I got the phone with them, I called my mom and told her everything that was going on. I let her know I was going to spend some time at a hotel and did not uh, want Cindy to know where I was. She wanted me to come home, but I didn't want to go somewhere that Cindy could find me. Just the thought of her made me ill. After that, I packed all my clothes, my computer, and my important documents. I left everything else in the apartment. I got myself checked into a motel and went silent. I know that people will, people say to stay away from alcohol when you're going through things like this, but I didn't care. I ended up drinking myself into a stupor before noon and passed out until that evening. Nobody's going to blame you, bro. But if you're making that a habit, then that's something else. But that weekend or whatever it was doing that, nobody's going to blame you. He says here, It was my phone ringing and text notifications that woke me up. All of them were from Cindy asking where I was and what was going on. I ignored all of them. 
I didn't want to hear her excuses, and from your videos, I had no doubt I was never going to get any kind of closure. She had been cheating on me for almost three months that I could prove, but due to her early behavior, more likely almost a year. I'm not exactly uh, sure what, what she expected to happen if I found out, but I'm pretty sure she had an idea that her little secret had come out. I should have blocked her number, but I'll admit that I was getting a morbid pleasure of how frantic her texts were becoming. <laughs> by 10 at night, my phone was getting spammed by Cindy and, and most of our mutual friends. This was D-Day for me. I ended up getting something out of the vending machine to put something in my stomach and drank myself stupid again until I passed out. The following week, two weeks had gone by in a blur. The following morning, there were more texts and missed calls from Cindy, but I didn't respond to any of them. She must have been losing her mind. I met with my lawyer later that day, and after showing her all the evidence, I had the prenuptial agreement. She helped me draft our paperwork to file for a divorce. The only request I had was that she be served at work in front of her co-workers. There you go. It took three days, but Cindy was served at work. I would love to share that she broke down and her world was crushed, but I honestly have no idea what happened or what her reaction was. My lawyer only informed me that she had been served. Up until that point, she had been frantically trying to contact me and my mom, and she had come to the house several times. My mom called her a SLUT and told her to leave me alone. If I didn't mention it again, I love my mom. That's awesome. Good for your mom. Your dad and mom are awesome. I just wish your dad would have whipped uh, your former father-in-law's ass or cold cocked him in the bathroom or something. But good for your mom. Man, I would have loved to have seen her getting served at the office. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, it was D-Day plus five when her father started trying to call me. I ignored his calls as well. I was done with Cindy and her family. The only thing left was to get the divorce over with. There were zero chance of reconciliation. I could fill out another four pages talking about the divorce, but the summary is this. I saw Cindy one more time. In my state, there's a mandatory mediation meeting before divorce can proceed. We met with our lawyers to see if there's any chance of reconciliation, and I rejected it outright. Reconciliation, my ass. After all that, you gotta be shitting me. Uh, Cindy kept trying to talk to me during the meeting, but I refused to even look at her. My lawyer had to remind me, remind her lawyer several times to have her speak through him. I would like to say that I was cold as ice and it didn't bother me, but I was crushed. That was one of the most difficult things I ever had to do. The 1A makes a lot of sense when you're reading it, but it's pretty damn hard to do in reality. Bro, nobody here is going to blame you for that being the hardest thing, everything you had to go through, and you being crushed and all that. Nobody at all. Now, down the road, if you get married, do the same thing, then that's a different ballgame. But you were young. You did what pretty much most guys would do. You know? Nobody's going to blame you here. So here I am. I'm on that from finalization of my divorce. The last six and a half years of my life were basically for nothing. At least I didn't get stuck paying alimony or child support. I know I'll survive and become stronger for this, but it doesn't make the pain go away in the present. For now, I'll be staying away from relationships, and I'll never make the mistake of getting married again. It's a sham. I really thought Cindy and I had a good life. I guess we didn't. I was just the last to find out. I did get a little payback in the end. After the divorce was finalized, I sent her HR department all the texts, pictures, and videos of her and the affair partner. I also sent the affair partner's wife copies of everything and offered my help if she needed to become a witness to if she needed a witness to anything. That's awesome. Good job, man. If, if, if in the back of your mind you're thinking that was the wrong thing to do, no, 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 no. After what she did to you, that guy deserved to get what he did by you sending that to his wife, and also she deserved the embarrassment there. And he didn't highlight enough here that guess what? Thanks to that prenup that her asshole dad uh, insisted that he signed, and he put that little thing about the whole infidelity thing in there, he doesn't have to pay her alimony. Isn't that nice? Because uh, he obviously makes more than her. No alimony for this broad. He says, I found out later that the affair partner had two kids, and while I feel bad that their dad is a piece of crap, I do not regret returning the favor or destroying his life. I mean, he destroyed my life. Fair is fair, right? I agree. I don't know if anything will happen to either of them at work since I've cut off all contact from Cindy and the mutual friends that we used to have. The last thing I did was purely out of spite, and maybe someday, when I'm old and wise, I'll regret it. But for now, I thought it was funny as hell. I sent Cindy's father a nice bottle of wine with my thanks for him for suggesting the prenuptial agreement, along with copies of all texts, pictures, and videos of her activities. I sent the package certified mail, so I'm pretty sure he got it. No. 
You're not going to feel bad about that. No, that wasn't juvenile. Uh Uh-uh. When you're an old man and you're sitting there in the rocking chair by the fire and having a coffee and you're you're looking back at your life and you're confused about what you had for breakfast that day, I guarantee you'll remember sending this guy that uh, package with the videos and the pictures and the texts. That's hilarious. That guy, the way he treated you, much of a jerk that he was, oh, no, no, no. He's he's not going to wipe that out of his head at all. You're a good guy. He... What more could a father ask for a son-in-law the way that you were? And I guarantee this bride will probably end up with a white-collar guy next, and then this guy will probably take her for everything it's worth. That'll probably happen. He says, so that's it. It was a painful learning experience. It's not for the, If not for the information you put out on your channel and the comments from your viewers, I might have missed all the signs and still be married to an unfaithful woman. For now, I'm still getting over the pain and working on myself. Now, I'm fully, now I fully understand what you mean when you say trust your gut. Thanks for the work you do. It is important. Bro, that was one hell of a story. And I'm so sorry you went through that shit, you know, with, 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 with the cheating and what you discovered and, and, and her asshole family. But thank the Lord you found everything you did. You kept your cool and gathered information and all that. And of course, when he wanted you to have that prenup, you took it to a lawyer and added that part about the cheating. Because if you didn't have that, you could end up paying her alimony after what she did. And that'd be a a crime. But I know you're hurting. I know this is recent because you said, I think 10 months ago, this was finalized. It'll get better. It really will. It'll take time. But as for the part about uh, never get married again, good. I want you to stick to that. Okay. I don't want to to get an email in five years saying, oh, I changed my mind. I got married again and the same thing happened. No, no, no. I think it's going to be a long time before you ever going to get into any kind of relationship. And even then, you're (laughs) essentially start treating them the way I talk about how you treat the gals and and you'll you'll be amazed at how they treat you. But, bro, one day at a time. But this is a great story. You know, I mean, again, I'm sorry you went through this crap, but this will help other guys out. Just how you watched a lot of videos of mine that helped you out and discover all this BS your story will help somebody guaranteed this story. Dudes all over the world are going to watch this story. It'll probably have 40,000 views in two days after I publish it. But you will help somebody. So thank you for doing that. You're returning the favor. And, and I'm glad I could help you. I'm glad what I'm doing here is my, doing my small part in helping dudes out there. So you'll get through it, man, one day at a time. But right now, you're 32. You're young. You're young to me. So focus on your purpose. Focus on getting your life in order, making a lot of money, everything you can do, getting your body in great shape. Uh, really be a, have a great, continue having a good relationship with your mom and dad. They're awesome. The way they stood by you and all that. And also thank that brother of yours who told you about my channel. And Because otherwise, who knows where you'd be. Imagine if you had a kid with that girl. That would change everything. So, But good luck to you, man. You will be fine. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think about this. Give him a big congratulations for getting through it. Anything you want to say to him, by all means, say it in the comment section because uh, I guarantee you he's going to read every single comment. And also, guys, if you've got a great story you'd like to share with me about something you went through and overcome, whatever, email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com, and I'll definitely cover it down the road. I get tons of these emails. Just bear with me, and I'll get to it when I can. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.